We're here now for our Politics Monday segment. I'm joined by Shauna Thomas and Tamara Key. Thanks to you both for being here. Good to be with us. So no fried foods, no butter sculptures, but a lot of politics to talk about. Yes. Let's do it. The Iowa State Fair, Tam, it's supposed to be an opportunity for candidates to break away from the pack, to take a chance to shine if they can, or kind of continue in the middle and fight for air. Did anyone stand out to you over the last few days? Yeah, and so I was there. Yeah. I was technically on vacation. I did eat fried foods, but I also... I, I, you can't you turn off. political tourist. I played political tourist. You can't turn it off. Um, and so what I saw is that uh, candidates like Kamala Harris and Elizabeth Warren, who are not at the very top in the polls, um, drew very large crowds of very interested people who came early and stayed late and watched their speeches. Uh, in fact, for Warren, uh, when she was speaking at the soapbox, you actually couldn't walk past uh, the, the entire uh, grand passageway or whatever it's called. <laughs> the, the, the big road in the middle of the fairgrounds was just completely congested with people who had stopped to watch her speak. Um, and uh, so uh, that, and that sort of reflects what you've seen in the polls, which is that Elizabeth Warren, uh, you know, taking as many selfies as she has to take mm -hmm. uh, at, at every event, um, has begun to uh, sort of notch things up in Iowa. I believe in, in the latest Iowa poll, she's in, it's in second uh, behind Joe Biden. Shauna, every selfie matters at this stage, but it's worth reminding people still over six months away before anyone in Iowa casts a vote. How much does this matter this cycle? I mean, <laughs> how much does the Iowa State Fair actually matter in any cycle? Like Ever. the thing is, yes. We, you know what our correspondent on Vice News was telling me, and she was out there as well, was that there was so much media there that she was confused as to whether the candidates were actually able to speak to Iowans one-on-one. -on -one. And so, yes, you have the Des Moines Register soapbox. We all enjoy seeing that. It's a good way for a candidate to get their stump speech out there. But also, the point of the Iowa State Fair and visiting, sort of historically, has been to try to have those one-on-one -on -one interactions with Iowans. Right. And to sort of, like, and, and the thing is, you know, what one guy told us was, like, all Iowans are here. It's not just a Democratic Party event. It's not some special interest event. You could run into anyone, but it's also kind of hard, apparently, to do with the amount of media that's there. But hopefully some of them took advantage of having those conversations with people who would not necessarily be able to see them or want to see them at, like, a general Democratic event or something like that. So they want to get as much attention as they can. Yeah. Not all attention is good attention, though. One of the storylines we've been talking about is how former Vice President Joe Biden has done so far in some of these events. I want to play for you guys just a couple of quick sound bites. They're from two different events, one from Thursday, one from Saturday. But these are the kinds of comments from Mr. Biden that are getting attention right now. Take a listen. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids, wealthy kids, black kids. I watched what happened when those kids from Parkland came up to see me when I was vice president. So, you know, Tam, we're calling these gaffes in this conversation, right? He misspeaks, he corrects himself, sometimes he has to come back and correct himself a little later. Is it fair criticism of him right now? Uh, it is Joe Biden. Joe Biden uh, has called himself a gaffe machine. He, uh, this is a, sort of a trademark. Uh, he, he, he does this. He's done this his entire political career. Uh, when he announced that he was going to run for president, that he was running for president, you knew that this was going to happen, and it has continued to happen all along. One thing that's been sort of puzzling to me is why this weekend is the weekend that everyone started to talk about, well, will Joe Biden's gaffes matter? Um, and I think that the way they could matter is if voters decide that it's an indicator of something larger. It's a, it, if it taps into a concern that voters have, uh, perhaps about his age um, or, or some other thing like that. Um, but that Joe Biden would say the wrong words or stumble is not new. Yeah, think, but Alex? I think the thing is, when he said the wrong words and stumbled historically when we've both covered him before, it's it's Uncle Joe. It's like, oh, okay, Joe Biden, he's great, like, whatever. And much like, in some ways, the the awkward touching and that kind of thing. But when you're the front runner for to be president and everyone thinks you may actually have a shot at getting the Democratic nomination, everyone is going to pay even more attention to every little stumble. And I do think that is going to get worse. Now, some of why this has been highlighted is that Trump's team is the one who sort of pushed this narrative a bit. Mm -hmm. I am interested to see if, like, a lower-tier presidential candidate 
goes along this narrative, like a one who's actually on the Democratic side. Because, of course, President Trump is going to push this. He wants to beat Biden. He thinks Biden's the guy to beat. But does the do the Cory Bookers of the world or does someone else start trying to talk about Joe Biden's age and play these gaffes or anything like that? Does it cause Democratic infighting? And I think that's something to be more worried about at this stage for Biden. You mentioned President Trump, and I want to ask you about something else. Over the weekend, he retweeted a post from a comedian linking the Clintons to the death of Jeffrey Epstein, uh, the accused sex trafficker in jail this weekend. We're not showing it here because it is a conspiracy theory. It is baseless. It traces back years to some far-right conspiracy theories. Uh, Shauna, of all the things the president could have been tweeting about this weekend, why this? Because he, I mean, I, I can't get into the president's head, and I can't pretend to be in the president's head, but he saw something. It attacked the Clintons. He is still attacking the Clintons. People still cheer, lock her up at his at his events, um, at his campaign events. And and you know what? He pressed retweet. And this is just what he does. He has spread other conspiracy theories. We can go all the way back to Barack Obama's birth certificate. Um, now, yes, he could have been tweeting about other things like, hey, does the Bureau of Prisons have a staffing problem? What is going on there? There are some real issues with Epstein and will his victims be able to see justice and that kind of thing. But, you know, this is what the president likes to do, and now we're talking about it. Tammy has 63 million Twitter followers. There is, you know, I've been in countries where conspiracy theories and misinformation campaigns are very active. It has an impact. Do, do you worry about that here? Is there concern? We are also in a country where conspiracy theories have been very active, especially in recent years, especially with social media. And President Trump has at times retweeted or otherwise trafficked in conspiracy theories. So that he is doing this now is not really out of character. It's something that he does. Uh, and I think that we are in a time in this country where conspiracy theories, for whatever reason, are particularly sticky. And especially on the right, but not entirely on the right, also very much on the left, conspiracy theories um, have taken hold. And and so this is, this is sort of, this is where we are. And the question really, I mean, the larger question that comes out of this conspiracy theory thing is that what do we do about, this, about social media? Mm -hmm. And are we going to hold social media companies accountable for the spread of things that are not true? And this is something Congress has been talking about, and they have been trying to tackle, but they haven't done anything yet. I think this reiterates that that conversation is really important. Another conversation. Yes. We'll have another time. There will be so many. <laughs> Shauna Thomas of Vice News, Tamara Keith of NPR. Thanks to you both. You're welcome. Thanks.